more than any other question a child could ask, more than why is the sky blue or where do babies come from, I have dreaded this moment. And yet, here we are, on our way to a bounce house birthday party, discussing Disney movies, when my five-year-old daughter Emily pipes up from the back seat and asks, how did your mom die? It makes sense. We were just discussing the questionable death of Moana's grandmother. And when you're five, you know a couple of things about death. You die when you're old. You die when you're sick. Sometimes you die when you're old and you're sick. I hadn't pictured the moment like this, though. I'm fumbling with my GPS. I'm trying to find a warehouse full of inflatables. I can't call my husband or my sister to shore up my story. So I'm just going to have to ask her or tell her. And in telling her, I'm worried that I'm just going to ruin her life because the explanation of my own mother's death defies all of the things that she understands about death itself. But I don't have much of a choice. So I do what every self-respecting parent does in a moment when they don't quite know what to say. I asked her to repeat the question. <laughs> and sure enough, Emily Rose Weiner from the back seat says, how did your mom die, mommy? So I take a deep breath and I say, she died in a car accident. And I hope that it's asked and answered. But if I know anything about five-year-olds and I've lived with two now, there are just going to be more questions. And sure enough, a very small inquisition ensues. Well, was her car hurt, she asks. And I reply, well, she wasn't in a car. A car hit her. I turn and look to see how this lands. And her freckles and her dimples are all contorted because she's giving me this weird, awkward smile that one gives when they don't quite know how to respond. She reaches her hand towards me and I grab it and I tell her it's okay. And then she fires off a couple more questions. Well, was she old? And I say, well, she was 60. Is that old? And I say, well, it's older, but people in our family live until their 90s, so she had a lot of living stuff to do. I don't tell her about the birthday dinner that my sister and I cooked for her just three weeks prior. I don't tell her about the look of pride and disbelief on her face when she ate the lemon yogurt cake we baked for dessert, sitting there thinking to herself, you two are just the best thing I've ever done, which is something I know because she told it to me very often. My daughter, though, just lays off the questions. Everything kind of morphs into a regular conversation. I find a parking space outside this giant warehouse. And just before we get out of the car, she lays the heavier question on me. Were you and Daddy married? And I say, yes, we were. We were married nine months before. But your aunt and uncle were set to be married in six weeks. And then she says, OK, we get out of the car. I don't tell her at all about the look of pride and disbelief on my face as I host the bridal shower that my mother couldn't attend, even though her name was on the invitation. And I don't tell her about the look of pride and disbelief when I walk my own sister down the aisle. We go to a bounce house birthday party. She bounces with her friends. And I go to a coffee shop. And I cry. And I call my husband and my sister. I tell them the story just in case it comes up in conversation, and I write everything down. And then that Saturday just proceeds, as most Saturdays do. And I didn't ruin her life, because kids can't really understand what happens to adults. She doesn't know that in telling her, I'm breaking every promise I've ever made to protect her as a parent. And instead, what she sees is a grown-up living through a really devastating time, a one-in-a-million thing happening to her own mom, and somehow she came out on the other side. And I know I didn't ruin her life, because that conversation was a couple of years ago. And most recently, we were together at synagogue. She was sitting across the room from me and observed me standing and reciting a, memor a memorial prayer from my mother, the same way I do every time we're at synagogue. And she caught my eye, and she mouthed, who for? Just to confirm, she's seen me done this before, sometimes the only sometimes the youngest. And I said, my mom, always. And she smiled, and her dimples and her freckles were just strong and confident. And she gave me two thumbs up. And all I thought was, we're all going to be all right. Thank you.